Good morning, Sugar Cube. Good afternoon. <laughs> oh, I guess it is. Okay, it's 11.58. So, so both ways are good. Both are correct, and then it works for whenever you guys are listening. Yes. Yes, it does. My goodness. Yeah, so it feels like fall today. It's kind of weird because it was keeps going back and forth and staying like really cold and then like still kind of like warm and now it's like very middle weird temperature. Today, I would say the weather feels like a Twilight movie, if that makes any sense. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Choked on my coffee. Ugh. Yeah, we just got coffee, guys. Yeah, but we have another thing of caffeine on standby, so we can make our little pop. Oh, I'm so excited um, for the caffeine. Anyway, Twilight. See, I think of Twilight movies being as like really cold. I think just a lot of them take place during the winter. I would, okay, I would say today feels like how the first movie looks, but I agree with what you said about the wintry vibes. Yeah, no, I get that. I can see it both ways for sure. Yeah. Um, Damn, that makes me want to watch Twilight. Did you see they're doing like a Harry Potter HBO reunion? Yay! I still haven't watched the Friends one, though, because the reunions aren't, like, continuing the story. It's just the actors getting together, so I'm just, like... Except with Harry Potter, I'm actually caring. <laughs> yeah, just because Emma Watson, though. That's how I feel. I feel like after re-watching the Harry Potter movies, though, now I have a better appreciation for Oh, my Daniel. God. I was gonna so... say Tom Felton and Emma Watson. Like, I need to see them communicate with each other i think they're both with someone though i don't care i well that's fair yeah i do not care i would still be here for it i'm just like break up with your other people and then come together yeah i i have a few people in my life right that like in my life that i kind of see that with right now and i'm like they're not doing anything like nothing wrong is being done and i don't like not even how they communicate with the other people like is weird or anything but I was just like I just know in the back of your two minds like you Wait, like each other is one of these like people we know you know both of them. okay yeah I know what you're talking about yeah you we know briefly talked about it last night we did briefly talk about it last night um yeah but that's how I feel about that but like they need to let their relationships run their own courses and mm-hmm. then eventually if it's meant to be they'll find their way together that's the only healthy way it can happen how romantic is it <laughs> both going through I, okay i'm not specifically talking about them but like this whole like type of story like going through that trauma and toxic relationships and then like finally being with the person who might be right for you but then you guys are both just fucking traumatized yeah one time somebody said to me like it would just be so nice to feel something than nothing at all and i'm like i have tr- sexual trauma from the last person i was with you don't want that shit, but okay. Yeah. No, the type of trauma, like, all over the board. Like. Yeah. And I'm just, like, I I hate when people make me feel like I don't have trauma from past relationships because I ended most of them. Like, honey, I ended most of them because I saw the trauma. Mm-hmm. And just because they seem like a good person on the outside of a relationship doesn't mean they treated me right. And it doesn't, nope. and also, like, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Like, this is the biggest thing I hear with people who don't like um, the stuff going on with Taylor Swift in the short film and she needs to get over it. It's like, yeah, this is her side. This is what she sees. And he has chosen to not share his side. And let me tell you, it's so validating seeing her because we know she's happy with Joe. And she's, like, um, like she makes you realize that it's okay to be happy with someone and still have trauma from your past relationships. Yeah. It's so comforting. And because I always feel bad for it or guilty that I think about some of the things that I dealt with because I am so happy. And then I'm like, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's kind of like when you're depressed and you don't know why you're sad and someone tells you you have no reason to be sad like no I don't know why I still feel so hurt by these things that happened all these years ago but I it was part of developing who I am and it hurts Mm -hmm. and 
Like, I can't help that. I'm happy now. Well, okay. And one of the things that Taylor, um, one of the lyrics in the All Too Well 10 Minutes, she talks about, like, in, um, oh, how, how did it go? So, um... Hold on, I'm thinking. I'm pulling up lyrics. It's towards the end. And in the city's barren cold, I still remember the first fall of snow and how it glistened as it fell. I remember it all too well. I love that because it shows how, like, with the changes of the season or during certain periods of weather, like... Even that can bring back memories and stuff. Yeah, uh, I feel that so deep because I a lot of times think of relationships seasonally. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, not that I'm like, oh, I'm going to date someone for this season. Like, not like that at all. But it's just like I connect a lot of my new relationships uh, or like my past relationships when they began because like – January, February, that type of winter because that's when so many of them started or um, big changes were happening in them. Mm -hmm. So, like, that time of year is always very hard for me. And, honestly, that's when most of my relationships that I've been in since then typically end because... Yeah, same with me. Yeah. But, like, earlier this year, Jalen and I obviously had uh, broken up for a little bit, like, Mm -hmm. but we were still seeing each other, so, one of those things, you know, but, like, it was right around that time, and it was just, like, I, yeah, it questioned myself because of those relationships and what they've done to me during that time of year, especially. Yeah, my past two relationships both went from October to January. It fucks you up. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Huh. Well, at least we were kind of on topic. Relationships. Yeah. yeah, relationships. Michelle has trauma. Michelle has trauma, and we are now in Minnesota, you guys. Yes, we How are. How exciting. I will say, though, that Minnesota is prettier than I realized. Agreed. Like, me, I feel bad because Midwest pride. Like, I feel like we should be like, yay. Like, I was just not expecting it to be so pretty. It's so pretty. It makes me hope that when people come to Indy, they're like, oh, it's prettier than I thought. I think Indy is so pretty. I I really do. Especially because there's a lot of different sections. Yeah, and I feel like I'm always finding something new. (coughs) Sorry. Um, I'm always finding a new section of Indy. It's, It's just so fun discovering. And I feel like growing up in one town, like... I miss that, and I love that, and, like, Yeah, and the cool thing here is that it's more liberal, so there's just a lot more types of places to see and go to, um, which I'm not really sure how it is in Minnesota, or specifically her... Minneapolis. Minneapolis. (laughs) I have such a hard time saying You and Lauren were both struggling. I was trying to avoid it. Um, Just say, like, mini. Mini. I don't know if that's something that people say, but we say indie. Yeah, so that's mini. true. Mini. Aw, that's cute. Um, but this episode got started right off the bat. Yeah, like right Except, in. I'm sorry. If I was one of the men where it's like, you go meet her and then she's like, oh yeah, just one of you is going on the one-on-one. Bye. I would have been so annoyed. Okay. Let's get into that. I, oh. I, won't, I won't. Okay. Oh, I'm excited. So she picks Joe. God, I and love the guys that. are all so butthurt for what? Okay, and my thought process is like I get them. I get. I think it's out of insecurity personally. But if I was doing a one, my, the first one on one in my hometown, and someone else is also from, you bet your ass, I'm bringing mm-hmm. the one that's also from there because then, like, we can connect through it. Yeah, and you can get their take on it, and it's. Like, you can talk about it in other places, but when you're actually there, it's like, why not? Why not take the guy from there? Also, I just, a quick side note, um, in my meeting today, her favorite's Joe. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lacey had a meeting this morning, and they talked about The Bachelorette. I love how, like, 
we end up talking about the bachelorette and like so many interviews and stuff like i've like multiple job interviews i've talked to them about it yeah i just i love it it's so exciting but her and joe have their one-on-one and so um they go to a baseball field yes um they're on the kiss cam yeah she throws a strike quote unquote that was not a strike that was like a foul of anything yeah i will say okay so before the season started i don't have any spoilers i promise you but i did see pictures of this date i didn't look at the guy though when i did see the pictures i like skipped through them because they were on the person's story so i like tried really (laughs) hard to skip through them um but i remember seeing her and some guy on a baseball field and then seeing it last night i was like oh my god those are the pictures I well saw. and my thing is my thing is we have seen preview after preview of this fucking baseball game for it to be 10 seconds literally like not even a whole minute i swear yeah that's what the bachelor does they really like emphasize stuff on commercials and then you see hardly any yeah of it. i think it's because it's like we were talking about before we like started recording it's kind of a boring season like I love Michelle it's a little boring and I kind of see that through like every other before now they were showing us previews for next week specifically and be like oh my god they'd make things bigger than they were Mm -hmm. um seemed like a lot of drama and I think last night was the first one since the beginning of the season that it seemed like it was a preview for the rest of the season and it's all stuff we've seen before pretty much here's what I'll say so on Becca as in Thomas and Becca, that Becca, that yeah. Becca Kufrin, on her season, great bachelorette, um, but her season was boring because she pretty much had two front runners, so really it was just a matter of who would win, and we were really seeing her fall in love, and I think that's kind of like Michelle. I do really see two front runners, and I think we are going to see her end up in a genuine relationship, whereas like with past seasons lately it's been more drama filled and not successful obviously look at katie i wonder who's the guy of the day do we need to talk about her fuck her you know what i'm happy we didn't have a podcast for her season because and just in our lives we fought so hard for her to turn out to be this annoying Mm -hmm. and i'm just like oh my god like why are you acting like you're 17 like Mm -hmm. Like, I'm here for the messiness, though. Like, I unfollowed I her, but I will be checking back for her 12 days of messy. Yeah. I want to know who's today. I don't know if I'm more annoyed when Andrew and Greg show up on my For You page on TikTok or Katie. Because mm-hmm. both annoying. But yeah. very annoying. God. Um, and Blake looks somehow Blake looks so like hotter now that he's not with Katie I don't know what it is because I still follow him because I still like him when you said Blake at first my mind went to Blake Horseman who was also like, fine as hell I didn't even <sighs> see he was on Becca season yeah. yeah he was her he was one of the front runners yeah oh God, he's so hot I, I don't honest, blame her <laughs> here's the thing I feel like it's gonna be the same thing with Michelle because I do in my eyes right now, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I think Joe and Nate are the well, yeah. runners. If anyone didn't think that, I'd be very surprised. Um, and, like, obviously, I have in my top three pick from the beginning, I have Brandon as the number one because I went on a limb and I wanted to make, like, a risky one. And I do think she still really likes Brandon, but maybe top five like Mm -hmm. he's definitely up there from what we've seen but not nate and joe level at all she keeps giving him shit we'll have to talk more yeah we'll talk more about it yeah yeah yeah. um but so her and joe go to her high school they make out in the hallway which i don't know how anybody else felt and i mentioned this to you last night i was uncomfortable yeah here's what i told autumn I would not mind taking my significant other to my high school. I think it'd be fun. I would enjoy it. But making out in the halls where I, like... Was traumatized? Yeah, like, (laughs) literally, I found out I got cheated on in one of the classrooms in there. 
I don't want to make out in that hallway. Like, no. Where I was, like, mentally abused by teachers? Mm, no, thank you. No, thanks. Um, I will say, though, it was super cute when they were playing basketball. No, that was fine. And here's the thing. Normally, I'd be like, oh, my God, all the sports stuff. No, it makes they sense. They make it cute. And I can just envision them with little children playing, playing with them. Yeah. And it's so cute. I can hear, like, I want to be on Mommy's team, like... Oh, my God. And then Joe picking them up to, like, throw the ball in the hoop. Here's what I'll say, though. I think Joe likes Michelle more than Michelle likes Joe. <gasps> really? I think Michelle's more into Nate. And I, I think, agree. And I think Nate um, isn't as into Michelle as Michelle is into him. And I think we're going to see her. We might see her get heartbroken. I think her, okay. She's really into Nate. You can tell. Oh, yeah. Wait, I think she's the most into him. And I think she, they have a very sexual attraction to each other. Um, and I think Nate is the one that, like, her body would want. Not that I think they don't have a good emotional connection. But I think Joe is more of, like, what her heart would want yeah my my thing with nate is if they end up together i don't see them lasting i agree um i just i don't know why and like it's nothing against nate because oh my god like we like nate i like nate but i just there's something off and i don't mean about him or about her just the relationship or how they feel about each other it's just like there's something off where I can't see it last. Does it does it seem too good to be true? Like No. That's not what it is? Mm-mm. I don't know. Maybe the next I of weeks We need I need to see more. I don't know. I feel like simultaneously we we'll, we're seeing these front runners, but we're also not seeing that much. I don't know mm-hmm. if that makes sense. I'm glad we got more of Joe. I am too. Because we haven't had a lot of him. I love that man. I love him so much. And you can tell he cares about her so much. He is trying so hard to open up to her. And he is doing it. Like, he is doing an amazing Mm -hmm. job. Well, first of all, Michelle goes, he reminds me of my dad and brother. And, okay, at first, I was like, that's disgusting. But then when she explained just, like, their personalities, how they're more reserved and more neutral, not as opinionated, whereas her and her mom are more, like, firecrackers, that I could understand, like, being like, oh, it's, like, my dad. He's more reserved and quiet. I get that. I get, no, no, and I get it. And, like, I agree. Like, it clarified and made it seem a little less weird, but it still made me uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, she said that, and we were all like, mm-hmm. Also, though, here's my thing with that, too. Again, like, we talked about this on last week's um, recap. Like, different people were going to have different feelings about things. I personally would never want to date anybody that even remotely resembled anything like my dad or my brother. Mm-hmm. And I assume you would feel the same way about your dad. I know you don't have a brother, but, like, I assume you would never want to date someone like your dad. Mm-mm. But Mich- even if I had a good dad, yeah, th- that's my thing too. And maybe we wouldn't know because we don't, we didn't have, we don't have good dads. But like my friends that have good dads, they do want to, like, I will say, date yeah, like that, most you know? people who have a good dad or or think they have a good dad are usually like, I want to find someone like that. Which I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I, it's just weird to me weird and maybe it's just our culture now because people say weird things but i know exactly what you're saying and i'm so i want to say it so badly because it's i feel like it'd be funny but Mm. i'm not going to (laughs) i'm not going to um but we all know what it is okay if you don't Mm. where have you been for the last like 15 years like literally at least speaking of dads though Joe talks about how his dad didn't really have a lot of emotion. Um, he had he can only remember seeing him cry once, maybe twice in his whole life. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of made Joe more reserved and more like he 
and he keeps his feelings to himself and this like there during the night portion when he was opening up oh my god a lot of broken bones oh my god that that was so tragic mm-hmm. and like I think being not like okay so I was an athlete for a little bit but that was not like a huge part of my life like mm-hmm. I'm not in the way that it was for him and Michelle so to like outside people are like well that's not that big to feel you just can't play basketball but like it's like apply it to yourself like what if something happened to you and you couldn't do something like a singer is what if you couldn't hear anymore mm-hmm. like or what if you're like you weren't like able to sing or um if you're a musician like instrument wise like what if you couldn't play an instrument like it takes a toll on you yeah when my grandma's arthritis got really bad it was hard on her because she couldn't play piano like and it's you feel like you lose a part of yourself yeah and so he dealt with um suicidal thoughts and depression and depression One of the things that he said that really stood out, or that Michelle said, was you woke up every day and cut through that. And I thought that was so powerful. And it really reminded me, like, damn, with all the shit I've dealt with, like, I woke up every day and I got through that and I get through it every day. So I love that she said that. Yeah, I agree. And, And she was very attentive to him and... You could just see the rawness and, like, how difficult but also rewarding it was for him to open up to her. Yeah. And I just feel like for him, if this doesn't work out, it's going to be one of those relationships that, like, traumatizes him. Not because Michelle, like, hurts him or anything, but just because it will be, like, one that got away type thing. It's going to be traumatizing in, like, a bittersweet way rather than a angry... Yeah angry Taylor's version way yeah no (laughs) no I agree and it's like now like if this doesn't work out which I kind of hope it's Joe at the end even though I think she's gonna pick Nate now I Um, still think she'll pick Joe I hope she does I do too I love him he's so sweet and I can't believe episode one I was like he's gonna be our villain and now I'm like no he is such a sweetheart (laughs) I love him. I don't know. It's just, he's and then so the, great. Oh, my God. They go on the Ferris wheel. <sighs> I love the Ferris wheel. It was wheel. so cute. It reminded me. I know you haven't seen it, but there's this scene on the OC where they have their first kiss on the Ferris wheel, and it just, you know, I love that show. I don't know what it is, because I've never been on a Ferris wheel with someone I was romantically interested in, but they're so romantic. I know. Especially at, like, night. Like, I just love carnivals, I, I think, go. though. I know, we should find one and go on a double date. I almost mm. said triple date, and then I remembered that we don't have another friend. <laughs> no, we really sh- don't. Oh, my God. I love our roommates, but, like, how do they both manifest their situationships? Literally. I, I like how them. at one point we were like, oh, my God, all four of us are going to be in a relationship, and then, yeah. nope. They're going to find people. I'm sending positive energy. I think new relationships come with the new year. Mm -hmm. And they also need to be open to them. And I think, really, there needs to be more time. Yeah. Um, Anyway, we find out, because they get the group date card, that Nate will get the next Mm one-on-one. And then the rest of the guys are going to go on the group date. And they go to a stadium for a little stadium date. What I will say is I was pleasantly surprised it was not actually football. Yes, agreed. Because if it would have been all sports dates, I would have been annoyed. Yeah. This date was a pleasant surprise. Besides the food. Yeah. Um, That was disgusting. First of all, they're all running towards her when they get there. Leroy. And Leroy and Brandon were like sprinting, like full racing. It was so cute. Yeah. And they bring out the Vikings, which I loved because... In high school, my team was the Vikings, my mascot. Yeah. 
So I thought that was funny. And then also them being in a stadium, I was like, oh, my God, this is all y'all stadium. <laughs> Which COVID better, like, wrap it up because when we graduate, I want to graduate there. Because that's yeah. where we, like, you walk. I always graduation. forget that we get to go there. I didn't yeah. even know that until my roommate freshman year was like, I can't wait to walk across the field. And I was like, she said the Lucas Oil one. And I'm like. I didn't know either until COVID happened and everybody got mad. So, but I was like, that's cool for us if they yeah. clear it up. I'm here for it. Um, mm. So Vikings, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Uh, I love the looks on the men's faces when they realized they weren't meeting the Vikings, like the football team. Yeah. It was so funny. And then they decide to make all of the men scream. Oh, my God. I literally wrote the screaming absolutely not like i think that was my catchphrase of last night specifically during the group date absolutely not absolutely not this gave me the ick clayton we love you and why would you do this to us why did we have to witness him doing that they are supposed to be giving him a bachelor edit okay why did they put that in there all of them gave me the ick but then okay you have Chris S. And his is so lackluster. Like, it was just terrible. Like, it was so lame. Here's what I'll say. No matter how they did it, we were going to get the ick. But at least the other ones put effort in. Yeah, except I'm like, Chris S., I feel you. No, he was such a mood He's the such entire a day. He's such a mood. And... Okay, but on the other hand, Olu is such a mood with his hatred for Chris S. No, Olu sees one thing he doesn't like about people. I honestly, like, I know everyone's saying this about other people, but I feel like Olu is, gives me low-key Aaron vibes. He just doesn't say anything to Michelle about it, like Aaron Shady. did to Katie. Here's and I the love thing, it. though. I feel like Olu, I feel like Aaron's shady in a more upfront way where he just hates everything. Whereas Olu is, like, I guess more serious about it. But it's so funny. It's so funny. But it's both entertaining, like, in both ways. Yeah, because both Aaron and Olu will just say stuff to the guys. And you're like, oh, my God. It's so funny. It's so funny. so funny. Um, But, yeah, they bring out food. And... (gasps) Costumes. We didn't talk about the costumes. Oh, my God, the costumes. I think the costumes were before the food. I think they changed into the costumes and then came out in the yeah. food. Chris S. as, like, um, what is it called? A satyr? Is that what that's called? I think so. The, like, he had a donkey ass. Whatever. You know you know what I'm talking about. Like, a horse yeah. ass. Alou's comment about that, hilarious. He he said something like, I think it was Alou at least. He goes, he went from looking like a horse's ass to having a horse's ass or something. Mm-hmm. I think it was Alou. But someone yeah. said it regardless. And that was so funny. Then once we got to see it, because I was confused. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, nobody else had that. And I was Iconic. like, it's so funny. They knew what they were going to edit him like. Mm-hmm. They done knew. They were like, yep, this one, got him in the bag. Oh, my God. That's It's so funny to me. And then the food, absolutely <sighs> not. No. I At first, I just saw the fruit, and I was like, ooh, grapes. And then... The rest of the stuff? Ew. There's no... I was literally, Chris, asked, like, I can't eat this. No. Like, I'm, am I going to get sick from eating? Like, yes, probably. Yeah. And then, after they eat, they make them fight against each other, which I'm like... Oh, they arm wrestle. Their poor stomach... Oh, it was arm wrestling? Yeah, it was just it arm was wrestling. It was funny, though, because Chris asked, when he's going against Olu, he goes, can I get someone else? No, he... Oh, did he say that? I said... I thought he said, I forfeit. Oh, maybe he said... He definitely said that, too, but... Yeah. Uh, he's such a mood. He's just... It's not in the... He's such a mood, but, like, he's annoying. Yeah. Except I love him. He's so shady. He is so entertaining. And you know what? I hope he's on Paradise. I do, too. It'd be I'm... so entertaining. Just for the drama. Yeah. I want it and I deserve it. I just I just want more drama. That's the thing. Since the season's kind of boring to me with all the Chris S stuff, I was like, yes, we're finally getting something. And, yeah. Um, 
We'll talk more about Krista's later. Yeah. Because I have a lot to say, but let's finish up the group date. Yeah, so then... Our wrestling. Clayton wins, like, Ultimate overall. Viking. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, y'all... Mm-hmm. I will say... He does seem really into her. Oh, he I is. I appreciated... So during the night portion, he pulls her, and I appreciate the fact that he wasn't doing, like, just basic hearsay. He just, like, he asked her a question right off the bat. Like, he was trying to get to know her more, and I appreciate that. A man who yeah. actually asks a good, genuine question. Yeah, and you I can tell though that she's not into him. Well, and I think Michelle might just be one of those people that, um, kind of, uh, kind of similar to how Claire was. Like, she'll know initially who she has strong feelings for and who she doesn't because we see the same guys from the beginning. Her having strong mm-hmm. feelings. The only times we've seen it kind of change and not be like that is Rodney and even then they've gone back to giving me more like friend vibes and we're gonna talk more about him because I have so much to fucking say and I know you do too mm-hmm. <laughs> but so I think she might just be one of those people because she already has such strong feelings from the beginning about Joe and Nate that it's hard for her to have that with more people which is normal mm-hmm. which is normal yeah agreed um, I think if I was in that situation, I'd probably be the same, where I'm, like, I know my initial favorites. And you can't help but be a little biased once you have that feeling. And, like, yes, relationships don't develop at the same pace, but that initial undeniable chemistry, mm-hmm. which is not everything, because I I didn't have that initially with my boyfriend, like... I would have never thought me and him would have been dating. And, like, it's the best relationship I've ever been in. So, like... Oh, I agree. Yeah. But, like, when you do have that and, uh, like, when you're in a group like this setting where you're dating a bunch of men and some men had that and some didn't... You're going to go off yeah, of that. I would because it's, like, it would feel like... Something was calling me to that person. Mm-hmm. And I would listen to that. She's listening to her heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And her lady parts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but during her sit down with Clayton, Brandon interrupts. Um, which I feel like this also shows you that interrupting doesn't always have to be a bad thing it's pr- i would assume it's normal they showed it a lot this episode and nobody was like mad or anything um that's probably how it typically goes and they just waited to put it in mm-hmm. to see if it i think they're starting an edit about brandon and they were putting some little bits in this um episode and lots gonna be next episode i will um, say when they were sitting down together it gave me the vibe where it's like the student has a crush on his teacher. Don't say that. That's what I got from it. I don't know. I just like, I don't know. I guess it just bothers me because Brandon looks younger and um, like everyone is just leaning on that part. It was like he is an adult and like. He is and it's not even his looks. It's just his personality that feels young to me. I get that. I don't know. I just, like, I want people to leave Brandon alone. Not even because I want him with Michelle. Like, that's not it at all. It's just I think Brandon's just a sweetheart. And like, Oh, I, I agree. I think he is a sweetie. I just feel like he needs... I feel like Michelle's just not the type of woman he should be with. I want him with someone more playful. Yeah. Playful and also someone who's more, like... Don't get me wrong. I think Michelle could do this, but he needs to be with someone who challenges him. Yeah, I think... And someone he can just be, like, cheesy and jokey with. And who will do it back, but then also can get him to be serious. Um, I think Michelle just kind of babies him sometimes. See, I feel like she's too serious for him. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like, she's so serious to him, but then she also, like, kind of babies him because of that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that yeah. makes sense. No, I agree. Um, I'm trying to think of anyone that, like, from Bachelor Nation I could see him with, but we also haven't had a Bachelor season. Honestly, 
If Abigail was single, I could have seen them together. Oh, well. She's... I'm, I said this last night, I'm surprised her and Noah are still dating. Not that I'm mad about it. Like, they seem happy. Good for them. Mm-hmm. It's just weird to me. Yeah. Yeah, I really don't know, though, who Brandon could be with. I don't know. But if I saw, like, if I was on Instagram looking around Bachelor Nation, I could definitely pick out someone. He seems like yeah. a great guy. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So then... <laughs> Chris is complaining because Michelle hasn't talked to him and he can't put on his big boy pants and go talk to her himself. And it's so annoying to me because he was like last week trying to call everyone out, like all this stuff. And then he makes no effort on the date just because he's upset that Nate got the one on one. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how you solve that? You talk to Michelle and tell her how you're feeling. Yeah, and oh my god, so when she sits down at the end of the night to wrap up, he literally, like, she says, it's time to wrap up the evening, she's in a great mood, and you, the camera, like, pans over to Chris, and he's just mouthing, wow. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Yeah. And that was so funny, she's like, are we missing someone, Chris? And then she's like, her face was so funny. Oh it reminds me... I feel like this happened during Tasha's season. Was it Ben? And um, so she was like wrapping up the date. I'm almost positive it was Tasha because I haven't seen that many seasons. Um, and someone like when she was trying to wrap it up, she was like, "Oh well." He was like, "Oh well, we didn't like really get to talk." Yeah, it was Ben. I think it was Ben. And she was like, "Well, it's time to end the date, and I'm really disappointed that you did it." pulled me to talk yeah, to Yeah, you could have pulled me, bro. And that's what the energy it gave me, except Tasha liked Ben, and I don't. The, Michelle does not like Chris. Like, producers kept him for an extra week. Yeah. Or she was like, I candy. Um, but mm, is Clayton he, gets the rose. Yeah, I thought it was cute. It was like, yay, we're finally seeing our bachelor. I know, and if Twitter could stop, like, we haven't seen him enough for you guys to hate him like this. Yeah. Yeah, literally. And, like, I honestly think, so I know a lot of people, I don't, a lot of people have their own theories about why they're not showing him more. I think they don't want to show us too much of his and Michelle's relationship because they don't want us to love them together because we know he's a bachelor and they want us to be like, oh, we're excited for his season, not heartbroken about him and Michelle, you know? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. Yeah. I think he's fun. I like him. I just think that maybe he is a little boring or maybe he is a stereotypical white man. That doesn't make him a bad person and that doesn't mean he deserves the amount of hate he gets. Yeah. So. I agree. T. Now, if we're going to hate on a white man this episode, we're going to hate on Martin. Because how do we not talk about that conversation? Was that during the group day or That's cocktail? That's on the next. Is that the cocktail party? That's the My bad. cocktail party. We'll get to that. But if we're going to hit on a white man, it's going to be Martin. Yeah. I got shit to say. Yeah. I had to think some shit over. And now I have some shit to say. So. Also, it's time. I'm oh. cracking open I'll crack my, too. my drink. I love that. Mm-hmm. So satisfying. Yeah, I'm just about there with my coffee, so might as well. Um, uh, anything else about the date? No. I'm ready to talk about the Nate date. Oh, but I, I thought I did think it was so cute when Nate and Joe are, like, at the house. She's, like, geeking out about the same girl, but, like, they're not intimidated by any each other. But so their friendship's mm-hmm. really cute to me. Yeah, Nate's confidence is so and I just feel like um, the energy of the house, and we we see this every week when men do leave at the rose ceremony. All the men know that Michelle is not are, is not trying to waste anybody's time, and mm-hmm. she's just genuinely following her heart. And that there's no bitterness. And all the guys, like you've had to get to this point because of how stressed it's been the entire season. You have to trust Michelle's decision making. Mm-hmm. And I love with this 
um, except a few that we've seen, and we will talk more about later. Um, for the most part, the men in the house, like, trust her decision making yeah and my thing is even if you don't if she decides if anyone decides that they don't want to be with you why do you still want to be with that person you know Mm -hmm. like I know it's hard um and I've been in the situation where it's hard to get over someone but like if someone genuinely doesn't want to be with me I don't want to be with them like I'll mourn the relationship and I'll hurt but I will never I will never beg someone to stay with me ever again I will never not me, long bitch. That's the one thing I'm proud of. I've never begged someone. <laughs> Girl. I've let it go. Poor, like, 13, 14 year old Autumn, you know? She she didn't know what she was doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck Sagittarius men, period. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, we can talk about Nate's one on one. Yes. Yeah, so- I have a lot to say. His date should be called Voting with the Besties because, unfortunately for him, he had to meet her bitches. I hated them. They were... mm. Okay, so before they even started talking, I told um, Lacey and Lauren this last night. The one in the black top, I don't... Did they say their names? I don't even remember their names. I know one was Allie. They had really basic names. Yeah, basic white girls, okay? Um, As we are kind of basic white girls yeah (laughs) i can say it i am one but before they even started talking the one in the black top with the like black hair i think or really dark brown Mm -hmm. hair i was like she seems like the type of girl to flirt and try to get with your boyfriend while you're dating them and i just feel like michelle didn't seem like herself the whole time they were there it was like she was way more quiet and less confident than she has been the entire season Mm -hmm. which i think is weird because when i'm around my friends it makes me want to be more confident and comfortable and more myself. So it was just weird to me. There and there's a difference between being protective and just being a straight up bitch. Yeah, Aunt Lindsay vibes. I think you said that. Yeah, I just I don't know. Something was off. And I also feel like because Nate is so attractive and just a beautiful looking human that they were harder on him than they needed to be because of that whether it was subconscious or not and I also feel like if it was Joe on the state it would have gone better mm-hmm. and I didn't and also okay here's the thing we didn't see the whole thing we don't know exactly how everything went obviously that's how the whole fucking show is um but the fact that it seems so off to us and then Michelle was like it went so much better than I could have expected I was like what is the tea like, why did you expect it to go bad? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And then at the end of the date, the girls were like, oh, my God, you guys are so cute. We love me. It seems like, so fake. Yeah. So fake. Yeah. Which I guess their protectiveness makes a little more sense with what we learned in the night portion. But I don't know. I was just like... These girls give me bad vibes. Yeah. And they're... I just expected her friends to be more... I don't know what the word is. Just not like that, I guess. Like, I just feel like anytime I meet someone that my friends are interested in, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. And maybe because it was a bachelor setting and it's not just like, oh, they have a new boyfriend. Like, they felt like they could be more Well, and for all judgy. we know, the producers could have provoked them. They definitely did. So. I, I don't put anything past the producers. No. Ever. They were probably like, ask them. Yeah. They were just... I also, like, I said this during the day. It was, like, I wish they would have brought, like, a couple or something. Mm -hmm. Like, on Katie's season where it was Caitlyn and her fiancé. Yeah, or even just bring in, like, the two girls, but bring in maybe, like, a guy friend, too. Or something. Yeah. Just for a more neutral setting rather than Nate being attacked by two girls. Yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know. It was not a vibe. Yeah, I don't know how Twitter felt about it, but I, just I didn't see too much thing. about the girls. I wasn't really looking during this time, so I'm not sure. But, um, so the night portion though was better because they were alone and didn't have to deal with her friends. Yeah. Um, he looked heavenly. They looked like gods. Like, yeah. next to each other. God. He's so hot. So is Michelle, but... They're very attractive people. Yeah. Um, but Michelle mentioned, so we're kind of... Here's the... Here's one of the reasons why I think she's into Nate the most. On this evening, evening portion, she was sharing a lot about herself... Rather than just the guy sharing about him. Yeah, and maybe that's just what we're seeing. Yeah, Um, but she opened up about this relationship that she had where it was just this constant, like, giving, 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 and getting nothing in return for three years. And then they broke up, and, like, she had a really hard time afterwards. Like, it was so bad, she almost got, like, put it on a feeding tube. Yeah, like, oh my god. Yeah, I can't imagine. So, that was really hard for her. Um, But she opened up a lot with him. And I was like, yeah, he's front runner number one. For sure. Um, And then, you know, they're just having this intimate conversation. And then then Michelle's face. (laughs) Michelle's face. Oh my god, it was so So funny. So funny. Um, but Chris shows up. That face when she saw him was like, you're done. Mm-hmm. You're done. I, here's the thing. Like, Nate's face when he turned around and saw him, though. <laughs> it was so funny. I love his facials. Oh, my God, they're so good. They're so good. They're either really funny or then there's just him being hot. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, I'm attracted to both. Oh, Yes. Definitely. Thousand percent. Um, but yeah, Chris shows up and um, he pulls her aside. And they sit down. And they was so mad. And oh, it was, was so pissed. hot. Yeah. It was Especially hot. like on a group date, it's one thing, but one on one and then this bitch shows up. And her two friends were there the whole time. Like, every other guy has gotten a one-on-one without other people. So to have her two best friends show up. So you missed that time alone with Michelle. God, I didn't even think about that. And then Chris, mm. who all he does is talk shit about you, to Michelle, mm-hmm. shows up. Yeah. So Nate had every right to be pissed. Not that Mich- like Michelle couldn't control it, so it's not her fault. But, and I do think, like, she definitely had to go with Chris because it's like if she wouldn't have then she would have just been thinking about it and not giving Nate her full attention so it makes sense um but Chris is like talking to her and Michelle literally has to be like I can speak for myself you didn't need to speak up for me like blah 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 and calls him out for like not Making an effort after calling everyone out. Yeah. Last week, you know. Literally. I'm like, wow, it was really bold for him to speak up and then just not do anything. Like, wow. Yeah. I'm like, you're giving her nothing. Absolutely nothing. Literally. Um, and so she, <laughs> she walks him out, as she should. She sends his ass home, and she doesn't even walk him all the way to the car. I know. I was obsessed with that. Oh, my God. But I will say I was kind of surprised because, um, like, in the car, I thought he would still be talking, but he didn't say anything. And then he didn't come back. Like, Yeah. We I were... have a theory that he will at some point. Or at least maybe it's just me hoping. And then you checked his Instagram or something. He had a picture with a niece. And we're like confirmed. Mm-hmm. Trash. Trash. If he has a niece, red flag. So. Yeah. Brothers and sisters of people that are future Bachelor contestants don't have daughters. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Um, but Nate 
handled it like a king. He left like he didn't try to like um, butt in and um, have her tell him everything that happened. He kind of left what happened between her and Chris between them two. And yeah, he's like, it's not my business. I was like, I respect that so mm-hmm. much. And then like randomly. They were talking, and he just goes, like, you make me so happy. I think that is genuinely, like, the best thing you can say to me. Mm-hmm. Like. And the way he said it and the look on his face, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. They're so cute. I really like them together. I just feel like she's going to get hurt. I just don't see them lasting. I don't even know if it's, like, him hurting her or what. I just don't see it. I think maybe also with Joe, a lot of the reason I see it is because I'm like, it makes sense. They make so much sense together. Yeah. But her and Nate have really good chemistry. And I do think, like, if it does come down between him and Joe, it's going to be so difficult for her. Yeah. No wonder she was crying. So much. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a lot. Yeah. I'm just, like, processing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was pretty much it on their date. He got Fireworks. The we see Chris S. leaving. hmm Yeah. And then we make it to yet another rose ceremony. That's how you know the season's been kind of boring, because we're still getting rose ceremonies at the end, and it's not getting pushed to next week. Yeah. There's not enough drama. And so going into this rose ceremony... Um, Clayton, Nate, and Joe all have a rose. Yes. Um, and then there's five roses to be given. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So eight total people are left at the end. Um, Chris is gone. Two more people leave. Um, but we see all the cocktail party conversations. Yeah. And first of all, we were a little thrown off because, um, Rick... (laughs) Pop off with that dance in the street and the piano. No, I straight up was getting goosebumps. I don't, you know, I don't even like him. You know, I don't even like him, but I was like, I want that. That's all I want. Yeah, and she was definitely into it. As she should. Yeah, it was romantic. You know what? It reminded me of something that would have happened in How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Yeah, I was was like, I don't know what rom com this is from, but sign me up. Like, yeah. Um, but literally they're just dancing in the street and there's a piano and he's like, you know, she makes me feel like a better man. And I'm just like, it was, it was romantic. I'm starting to not hate him. This is a problem. He hasn't done anything icky this week. Here's the thing. I feel like also I might start liking him more just because some of the other men are so disappointing. Yeah. Agreed. Rodney? (laughs) <laughs> Rodney he gives me the big ass ick yeah I straight up have so much ick from him now and I know we were like kind of like oh they're so cute but like just the past two weeks have not been a and main. friend vibes oh for sure. sure for sure yeah um nothing will give me bigger ick anything nothing then he said we hella cute like seriously yeah, like, he was dead serious. And, like, he just kept saying shit. And I was like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with you? He does give me that vibe, though. Like, maybe he doesn't realize, like, that. Because, like, he's probably been friend-zoned a lot. Because he has a big friend energy. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of girls translate that energy the same way. If that makes sense. Here's the thing. So, you know how on Matt's season, Abigail really held on to the fact that she got the first impression rose? He's going to hold on to that nice date they had, and it's, there's, it, he's just going to get disappointed. Yeah. Not a fan. Yeah, not a fan. I don't know. We just have the egg. Like, he's a good person. There's nothing wrong with him. We just have the egg from him. Something about him bothers me. I don't know. I don't know. He but went back to being less attractive. Like, he wasn't that attractive to me. And then his one-on-one, I was like, he's way more attractive than I thought. And now I'm back to, like, nah. He reminds me of The Rock. Like, how he talks. <laughs> like, you sound like The Rock. Oh, my God. Was it... You said that Brandon 
reminded you of Brendan's voice? No. Or whose voice was it? Chris S. Yeah. He sounds like Brendan. He did. Taisha Brendan. Taisha Brendan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Martin. Hmm. How do you feel about Martin? Okay, so we kind of talked a little bit last night because to a certain extent, I can kind of see what he's saying and I know a lot of people will probably get mad at me by that and maybe it's just like I understand the like having talked and like almost dated women I've seen how women like expect their partner to do everything and I think men do too though so I think it's there is like a distinction and like what really bothered me about what Martin said was like he made it seem like men don't expect women to do that and I think they actually do it more than women do like they men always not always I don't want to generalize oh my god and, well, I don't know. I'm getting the, frustrated. That was the biggest issue for me is because I could get what he was saying, but he was making it where it was like all women are high maintenance and all women At least, expect men to do everything. And I'm like, why don't you just say like, if he would have phrased it like, I don't think that one person in the relationship should do or expect everything from the other partner. That w- that I would have been like, yeah. That makes sense. But the way he handled it was so gross to me. And how he was like, I just know you're different, Michelle. Like, I love Michelle, but Michelle knows she's just a woman. Like, Yeah. Well, and I'm sorry, I hate when guys do the, you're different bullshit. I hate it too because I'm not. I'm pretty fucking basic. And I'm like, you've (laughs) seen that in every movie and that's, you're just saying that. No, like, do guys not think we watch the same movies as them? Do they think we... Like, we watch those ten times more. We can see right through your lines. Yeah, and the thing, too, with me is he kept making excuses for himself. And I'm like, buddy, you backed yourself into a corner. Sorry. Yeah. Like, what did you expect when you say shit like that? Yeah. It was just rude. And, like... I'm sorry, but you're really going to say women are high maintenance when you're there with your frosty ass tips? Like, are you kidding me? And of course, the personal trainer would say this. I was just about to point out that he was a personal trainer because I feel like... He's an ass. Yeah. We've really tried to make excuses for him and I don't know why. And all I have to say, he's a cancer. Yeah. And you know what? Nate's, God a, help us. Nate's a cancer too. <laughs> I know. That's so why I'm I said anxious. That. But there's something about cancer men that they're just not shit, you guys. They're just to not. To be fair, I don't think we know Nate's full chart. I'm going to look on Batch Horoscopes to see. Um, just because I'm curious if they have um, Nate's hor- or not his horoscope, but like his full chart. No, they don't. That's so annoying. It's so frustrating. I just want to know what Nate's chart is because I'm curious if his moon is like a better one. <laughs> but they don't have it. Oh well. But yeah, hopefully Nate doesn't prove us wrong because that's going to be really disappointing. Yeah. Um, Who else talked with Michelle? Um, Let's see. Did Olu? I don't remember. I don't either. There Every time a... I remember Olu, it's like not with Michelle. <laughs> Every time I'm re- I remember him, I'm like, oh yeah, he's there. So, I don't specifically remember Joe, Clayton, or Nate, the three with already roses. I don't remember anything specific from the cocktail party. Mm-mm. And then we already talked about Rick, Rodney, and Martin. So the only other... Four are Leroy Casey, which I don't remember seeing either of them. No, we never do. Which says enough. It says yeah. enough. Um, and then Alu and Brandon. Yeah, her and Brandon. Oh, they that. did have a moment because she got him a birthday cake, which we were able to figure out that this would have happened like July, August, since yeah. he's a Leo. Yeah. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember seeing her talk with Alu at all. No, I feel like. I do think 
Alu is more of a drama. Oh, yeah. A He's a boy. shitster. Yeah, but I feel like unlike Chris S., like, I think Michelle has a lot of respect for Alu and how he carries himself. Yeah. And he could actually stir it, like, stir the fucking pot. Yeah. As long as he doesn't go after Nate and Joe, which he doesn't really seem to. But then again, I'm like, it could be one of those surprising things where it's like, randomly, one of the guys is just like, I'm going to attack him. Mm Because I do think there's going to be more drama with Nate. Oh, Nate especially. I don't think anyone's going to come after Joe. Like, I haven't got... Joe's baby. Yeah, and like... I think everyone sees that they have a connection. I think people are intimidated by it, but I don't think they have a problem with Joe himself. They don't have a problem with how Joe treats mm-hmm. Michelle, anything like that. I feel like it's going to be one of those things where, I, like, towards the end, they're like, oh, shit. Joe is the one that we just didn't realize, like, how intense their connection actually is because they're going to be so focused on Nate. Because Nate's very outwardly confident and talks about it. Mm-hmm. And I think Joe is the type of guy to keep his relationships more private. And um, I feel like it, I don't know, people will disagree with me about this. I think it's, it's his Gemini placements. Because Jalen has a Gemini moon and that's very much how he is mm-hmm. with our relationship. And I really like that because I haven't had that in past relationships. Yeah. And I really like the private the privacy. Um, and I don't like people getting involved because I think that's why most relationships end. Yeah. Because other people know too much about your relationship and get in your head. Mm-hmm. And then you don't, like all you can do is think about what they said to you. And it's, ugh. Yeah, I don't like it. So I think Joe and Michelle have that. Um, whereas Nate, like, not that he gives them details that we can see because that'd be weird because they're all also dating her. Mm-hmm. It'd be weird, but it seems like they do talk about it because Chris S is like, well, all this thing, all these things she said to me, she said to other guys. They must talk about it, you know? Yeah. Well, and Martin brought up everything that happened and why he thinks. Oh, that was Martin, not Chris. See? Oh, see, I was like, maybe Chris did say something. Maybe he did, but I think I'm thinking about what Martin said. Y'all, last night, this it's been a mess. <laughs> like, my life has been a mess, so I've not been focused on, like, anything. So I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good, but, yeah, they do talk. I don't know. That's weird. Because it's like, what else are you going to talk about? And also... I feel like it's one of those things where you would just be comforted that someone else is going through the same experience as you. So it depends on your personality, though. Maybe it's my Cancer Venus, but I'd be like, I feel like I would be insecure. Like if... um, I was literally about to say I would be more insecure about it. (laughs) I would be more insecure that they were also having those moments. Mm Mm-hmm. It would always be in the back of my head. Yeah, I again, we could never do this type of show. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, think about it. Like, fantasy suites are a week before you get proposed to. Yeah. Well, and here's my thing. We were kind of talking about this earlier. I will never beg someone to choose me. Not that I think that's what the show is, but in the back of your head, you're always hoping that they choose you. And I just don't want to be one of 30 options. Like, I don't want to be one of two options. Yeah. You know? It's so gross when you think about it. When you think about it like that, like from a real world perspective and not a reality TV perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it makes a good show. And, and <laughs> yeah. to be fair, it's not they're not against their will. They signed up knowing what they were doing. Yeah. Um, I think Jalen thinks that I'd be more built for this than him. But if I was actually in either position, bachelorette or, like, contestant, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I would be a mess. Yeah. Cross knows I'd be a mess. <laughs> now, Paradise. Like, almost Paradise. I miss Paradise. Me too. Like, I know we got so drained from it, but I miss it because it was so dramatic. And I like having a lot of men and a lot of women. Yeah. I will say, though, I'm really excited for next season because it's like, our, what's who's going to be our next Serena and Joe? Like, the couple we didn't see at all, you know? Yeah. Agreed. 
But Leroy and Casey got sent home. Yes. I was, so. what I was surprised about in the order she passed out the roses. Um, so we know Joe Clayton and Nate already had it. But then she went to Rick, Alou, and Brandon. Mm-hmm. Then Martin. I thought Martin, if he stayed, he would have gotten the last one. Yeah. But from the editing of the, be- like, more of the beginning of the cocktail party, it did seem like Rodney would be one of the, the last one to get a rose or, like, he would go home because he mm-hmm. seemed so anxious about it. Yeah. And also, we don't know what order they actually went in because they could have edited, like, who was last. Yeah. A different way. Or, but can they do that with the last rose? I don't know. No, because... No, I don't think they would with the last one. The other ones, maybe, but the last one, probably not. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know. It makes me wonder if Martin or Rodney will go home. Like, who would go home first out of those two? I have Rodney in my top five, but I have the ick from, I have the ick from both of those men. I have the ick from Rodney, but I just have a dis... A strong disliking towards Martin. Yeah. He's a bitch. yeah. He gives me like PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He kind. Of, mm. He gives me PTSD of my cancer ex. Mhm. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. He he's a gaslighter. Mm-hmm. Like, and I know I don't know why the internet makes it seem like that word gaslighter is such a big deal. Yeah. Like, it's not, like... And I'm, like, maybe it's being pointed out so much because it's... It's true. ...common. Yeah, like, people act like it's so rare and it's, like, not. No, I'm, like, it's it's a pretty common thing, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, but hopefully yeah. next week we get some more... Drama. ...something interesting. Can't believe we're down to eight. I know. It's, like, close. Yeah. I like how last week I was like, oh, my God, there's still this many. And now I'm like, oh, Oh my God. God. Yeah, because last night I was like, what recap are we on? Are we on five? And you and Lauren were both like, I think we're on six. And I checked my notes. I was like, we're only on five. Mm Mm-hmm. So we got five more weeks. It goes that long. I never remember. I just feel like we're so close to the end already for some reason. And we'll have a (gasps) tell-all. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Chris S. Yeah. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Jamie, who I keep forgetting was a part of this fucking season. I know. <laughs> God. Yeah. I'll be waiting for the tell-all. I love a tell-all. I know. I'm really like, drama. Here we drama. go. Drama. But, okay. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Another episode wrapped. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Later, you guys. Bye. Bye.